Okay, welcome everyone to the Evolution of Wellness. It's a series of evolved classes to educate and inspire your personal health evolution. I am Dr. Colleen Cashel, and sitting next to me is Dr. Valerie Cardillo. We are your guides of the wellness inspiration. A little disclaimer that this is for informational purposes only. So please discuss any health um, concerns you have with your health professionals. And um, you can always ask us questions and we are here to help or give any advice, but please discuss that with your doctors. Today's Evolve is, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna move this thing off of there. Today's Evolve is Auras and Chakras 101. In Evolves is our little name for our little classes. Our class, I love so much. <laughs> We're going to start out with a couple definitions just to kind of put some context to everything we're going to do now. So what is an aura? What is a chakra? The aura is an electromagnetic field or bioenergetic field that surrounds all living things. A colored projection of a subtle body of energy, energy dist distribution from your chakras. And what's a chakra? Chakras are the energy centers of your body that help regulate all its processes from organ function to the immune system and emotions. So our auras are basically an expression of our physical vitality, our emotions, our experiences, our thoughts, relationships. I'm sorry, I have to admit people in. Uh, our relationships, um, expressions of our energy, and our aura has colors to it. Uh, there's various layers, and those layers have structure. There's uh, symmetry there, but they're very fluid, and the colors are, should be very vibrant in a healthy aura. Your aura is actually more complex than our own physical bodies. It is how we relate to people in our surroundings and allows us to receive and project the subtle energy frequencies to and from our bodies. It allows us to interact and exist in this physical form. The early sacred writings on auras refer to an aura or a life force in the Vedas and Ayurvedic texts. This, uh, and this is ancient culture explaining energy centers as well as traditional Chinese medicine, which refers to the channels or the currents of energy. And those are called meridians, which I'm sure many of you have heard that also. And those are associated with acupuncture. So we are constantly sensing and reacting to the subtle energies around us. You react to them before your conscious mind can even register it. You might feel right away when you meet someone that maybe they're not trustworthy. Um, remember before caller ID, uh, I'm sure there were times when you picked up the phone and you knew exactly who was on the other line. Uh, we have certain phrases we use. We talk about being punched in the gut when we hear something difficult. We might say we feel heartbroken when extremely sad. And many of us use the term all the time that you're drained or drained of your energy on a regular basis. These are all you feeling your subtle energy layers of your aura, which is beyond, beyond that conscious thought, but it, it comes out in the conscious ways. Mm -hmm. Your, when your aura is balanced, it gives off a magnetic resonance. That is energy that others are sensing. And when it's in balance, there's harmony when they're in your presence. If your aura is out of balance and those layers are just kind of disconnected, others are going to have a sense of dissonance or disharmony around you and will not know how to generally connect with you. This is really neat. So this is something called curly in photography. There's some pictures taken with very special cameras, which are actually showing the energy come up, coming off of certain foods. So on the left side, up at the top, I want you to see the sprout. Sprouts are bean sprouts, or typically alfalfa sprouts. They are coming off of a vegetable or you know something where it's live. Look at the amazing energy that's coming off of the sprout. Really bright, really vibrant. The one in the middle on the top is cacao, which is chocolate. Which <laughs> so, I use in my cooking. Which is really amazing, the amount of energy and the cool colors that are coming off. And then I also want you to see the vegetables um, that 
uh, are showing us. There's conventional and there's organic mushrooms. So you see the difference between the organic and the conventional mushroom, the organic broccoli and the conventional broccoli and the tomatoes over on the right. Look how much brighter and more energy is coming off of them, which just goes to show you how much better organic, organic can be for you. Uh, we know, you know, a lot of people talk about how organic is more expensive, but this is energy that your body's taking in. It's not just the nutrients um, of your vitamins and your minerals, which you're getting energy from foods. And sometimes raw foods and the reasons why um, vegetables are doing that for you is giving us a lot more energy. So don't be afraid to buy organic. <laughs> um, the, I guess in, in all purposes, um, spending a little bit more money is giving you um, more energy, more energy and, and, and better quality food. Here's some really cool pictures also that are um, a flower, which is really awesome. Um, a leaf. This is the energy taken off of coming off of these of these things. Yeah, with this uh, curly in a photography again. So now I'm just going to show you some other pictures of what actual people look like with their auras, their pictures taking. So now there are layers to your aura, like we were talking about, and there are different colors associated with the aura, but we're all going to have some kind of predominant ones that come out. So when a picture is taken, your predominant colors, and which is really kind of drastic to see, see this person here that has all that yellow, and then the person on the left has got a little bit more varying there. And we'll talk a little bit about why a person might have more color, um, you know, and be dominant in one than the other. And the ones on the right there are kind of a neat way to look at the, the whole body and how um, the different colors might come out. Here's a very cool little video I want to show you here. It's based on a Detroit uh, TV station, but I'll tell you, it's actually a really cool uh, way to, to understand the photography. Oh, it stopped. What happened there? All right, sorry. Sorry, everyone. technical difficulties. <laughs> I have no it idea worked why that before. Just did that. Hi. All right. Hold on a minute. I think I didn't share the screen again. All right, what is going on here? Is the screen shared? Can you share? Sorry, everyone. Let's try this again. Take two. Right now, it's just a lot of like you trying 
so much happening and we think about so much and sometimes um, you forget that there's a greater thing around mm -hmm. you and having mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. color because we don't see the color is just kind of intriguing to me. Of the colors and the intensity of the we can discern um, the energy or things that you're bringing into your life, what you're experiencing now, and even what you're sort of putting out there into the world that you are now. see. Okay. So I'm going to. I just had somebody tell me that they can't see the slides. If anybody could put into the chat, can you guys see the slides? Somehow we lost the, the share. We lost the share. Can it get? It's they're it. saying in the chat. All right. Let's see. Yes. All right. So see. you can see my slides. All right. So, Jules, I'm not sure what's going on. What happened there? <laughs> All right. So, we're going to we're going to move on here. Okay. So let's talk about the aura a little bit further now. So you, you can see that um, the left side is what a healthy uh, aura looks like. And there are seven layers to your aura. They are arranged one inside of the other, like Russian nesting dolls. The energy of each, la of each layer varies in vibration, which allows them to coexist while occupying the same space. They are in the shape of an egg around your body. And if you were to extend your arms above your head and alongside your body, when your arms are outstretched, that's kind of the whole, you know, space of your, in the border of your aura. You can see that there's the rainbow colors, colors inside. There are some distinct um, differences between each layer. Uh, the colors are very bright and vivid. And on the right side, you can see that that aura looks a little bad. <laughs> the colors get dark and muddied. Um, that can be from more negative energy. They're kind of, instead of um, bulged uh, or round and around the body, they're kind of bulging and they show weird erratic patterns and they're um, just not as vibrant as they, as they or should be. Um, and the, the more vibrant and the more uniformity, the more symmetry of, around your aura layers is the healthier and the more integrated all the areas of your life are going to be. Um, when one layer is thicker than the other, it means that that person is kind of predominantly um, using that layer to interface with the world around them. These are the areas where you will find your strengths for most part and what feels the most natural to you. Most people really only kind of work in one and two layers of their aura and um, that's how they relate to the world. This kind of leads to lack of perspectives and experiences because you're not using the other layers to experience life. Um, when you bring awareness to your to the uh, areas of your aura that feel kind of um, like a struggle or a challenge and you work through them to create more openness, it's going to increase your human experience here. And it's going to balance the relationship between all the layers of the aura um, because they are separate, but they're all connected. The seven layers share information with each other and to the physical body through the chakras and your external environment. It's all talking to each other for the most part. Um, and the colors of the aura are changing all the time. Um, and each person has their own unique shades and hues. We're gonna show you, uh, too far, show you what the actual names of the seven layers are. So the lowest layer on the bottom is called the etheric layer or sometimes instead of layer, they use the word body. So the next is the emotional body. Then there's the mental body, the astral body, the etheric template, the celestial body and the cathartic template. Now we're gonna talk about each of these layers a little bit. So you have a little bit of an idea um, more so about what's happening there. I just go on one second. I'm just gonna look in the chat and see if there's anything else that I need to talk to. Okay, so the first layer is that, oh, the first layer is the etheric body layer. The color that's associated with that is light blue to dark blue. And the energy channels known as the meridians and the energy centers called the chakras are located in this layer. It's the densest vibration of all of your layers of your aura. And it's about a half an inch to two inches from your body. 
With a strong etheric body or layer, it's actually harder for someone to get sick, even if you have problems with some of your other layers of your, um, of your aura. It's gonna protect, because it's closest to the body, it's gonna protect the physical body. It's the physical blueprint of your body, like the base or the root chakra, which we're gonna talk about. And it relates to health, survival, and security of your physical body. And some of the physical signs of illness and injury can be seen in this layer. And the etheric layer is a major part of our immune system. And it usually appears um, as to visual people as that, like I said, a light blue, a gray. Um, and it can be the easiest of all the layers to see. And we're gonna tell you how you might be able to do that later. The second layer is the emotional body. This layer relates to your emotions and your boundaries, emotions within us and emotions we have for others around us. And the emotional layer is often seen as a swirling mass of energy. And it's a swirling mass of all of the colors that are in the aura field, kind of like a rainbow um, swirling around. This is about um, one to three inches off the body and it's on top of the etheric body layer. Um, it's connected to the, the rainbow with all those colors. And it's interesting how the rainbow colors of the aura, and you're gonna see later the rainbow colors that are associated with the chakras um, are also part of rainbows out in nature. And the rainbows right. come from sunlight, sunlight and there's frequencies associated with ultraviolet light and it just brings it all kind of together with the energy and frequencies of nature and your body and all this unseen energy that we have all around us. The emotional layer is where all your emotions are housed. Um, and because it sits on top of your etheric body, which is more of your physical stuff, the emotions do have a direct connection to your physical body. Um, and the more that's kind of held in there and isn't flowing can cause physical pain and discomfort. The more open and clear you are, the brighter these rainbow colors are um, from that layer. And when you hold back, they're just dimmer and they're not as vibrant. The third layer is the mental body. And this layer stores and runs the programs associated with your basic beliefs, your intellect, your personal power, your understanding. This layer is your thought and ideas. And the layer is usually most visible around the head and the shoulders. Um, the layer is usually pretty easy to see if you are someone that can see auras. Uh, it's about three to eight inches from the body and it's the color associated it with it is yellow. Um, this is kind of where our lower gut instincts are located. And when someone says I have a gut feeling or I'm gonna go with my gut. And I was talking to Val earlier and said, you know, the TV shows, especially the voice where the people are picking their coach and they almost always 75% of the time say, I'm gonna go with my gut. They're attack, they're you know, um, tapping into their own energy and, and kind of feeling it and going with it. So um, people who primarily use this mental layer um, as their uh, primary uh, way to relate to the, the world um, can squish their physical layer a little bit, which isn't a good thing. Um, so the next one is the astral layer, which is the fourth layer. It's associated with the color green and it's about six to 12 inches from the body. And the astral frequency is connected to the heart chakra. So its frequency is of love. Um, it's connected to the heart chakra, like I said, um, and we're gonna talk about that later. Um, but one cool thing about this is, is this is where your physical body and your spiritual body are being connected through this layer. Um, and actually kind of the same thing with the chakra. Yes. Um, its job is to transform the higher frequencies that come in from the spiritual layer and help your body discern them and make them more understandable. But it also does that with the lower frequencies that come from the physical parts of you. And this allows physical and spirit to communicate. Um, and people with underdeveloped astral bodies um, can have difficulties in their relationships. Um, and a healthy astral body are kind of drawn to community and are very comfortable in giving and taking in a relationship. The fifth layer is called the conceptual body or it's the etheric template. It's usually associated with a cobalt blue um, and it's one and a half to two feet from the body. It has a frequency associated with communication and it is considered the spiritual part of us and it's con um, connected to kind of our DNA of, of ourselves also. 
the body, this, this layer is a copy of the physical body, but on a higher, more vibratory level. It contains all of the information of your soul that wants to be made manifest in the physical body. Um, it's where your personal truth is. And when you are good at tapping into this is where you, your ability to receive guidance for the greater good is coming from. The sixth layer is called the celestial body. And it's commonly also referred to as the third eye. It's about two to two and three quarters feet from your body. And its color is more of an opalescent mix of all the chakra colors. Uh, it it's the frequency of creativity, thinking, ideas, spiritual bliss, unconditional love, and the ecstatic state of oneness someone might feel during heightened spiritual awakenings. Um, it's kind of uh, connected to communication also. And people with strong celestial bodies can see the larger picture. They make things better in, in new and useful ways, and they can be thought of as visionaries in the world. But sometimes people with strong celestial bodies, um, they can see that big picture, but they can't actually implement it because their lower layers are not as balanced. So we're going to talk about balance a lot through this. The seventh layer is, is connected to the soul. It's a um, connected to the crown chakra. It's called the catharic template body. And that is um, represented with the color gold. And it's two and a half to three and a half feet from your body. Um, they kind of refer to this as God or your connection with God through this layer um, and more universal energy coming in. It's the larger picture of your life and has the wisdom of who you are in it at your soul level. Um, and people who are rebellions and have issues with authority, many find it more challenging to connect to this level and listen to that higher self. It can take time to trust that and let your higher wisdom kind of come through and let you, you know, give you that map of who you're supposed to be. And once trust is established, um, the ego and the mind are always talking in our heads, but it can then relax, have fun, and kind of go with the flow and let your life um, work itself out. All right, why is my stuff not moving? I want to just read this quote. The beautifully complex nature of the aura and its seven layers gives us the capacity to interact with and enjoy experiences in our physical body, feel emotions, use rational thinking, connect relationally, communicating authentically, and elevate to spiritual layers of our being. Understanding the nuances of your aura layers allows you to recognize them in yourself, develop a deeper relationship with your strengths, and pinpoint areas of imbalance for the greater good. And that's from a, a great book that I, we used to uh, get a lot of this information. All right, I want everyone to do a little exercise with us now. This is very cool. <laughs> So take your hands and I want you to put them along each side, just a few inches in between. And I want you to slowly start bringing your hands together and bring them apart and bring them together. You're going to start feeling a little bit of a, of a resistance, a little bit of heat maybe. You're gonna start feeling energy. You can do it with somebody if you're not alone. Um, and you might be able to feel their energy against yours, but just the slow back and forth, don't touch. But if you, you get used to doing this, you like can start pressure. feeling, yeah, you feel a little pressure. That is your energy coming off of your body and it's there and everyone has it. You might not be super attuned to it like some other people are, but over time you, you can. Another one we're going to do is a way for you to possibly see some of your aura. So have a person stand in front of a, a, a plain white wall. And I want you to focus your eyes on their outline, not on their face or whatever, on their hair, kind of move a little further out of that. And you should be able to start seeing a bluish gray line that appears around every person. That's the etheric body, that first layer we just talked about. Uh, and they say that it's actually easy to see the etheric body of trees on cloudy days. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, if anybody tries that, please let us know. We want to know if that's true and it works. So here's a really cool um, explanation of the seven layers of the aura. And you can see from the bottom, it's the etheric all the way on up. And next to each of these layers is a little symbol. Those are the symbols that correlate to each of the seven chakras. So the etheric body is the root chakra. The emotional body is the sacral chakra. The mental body is the, well, solar, solar plexus. plexus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm daydreaming. <laughs> 
the astral body is the heart chakra. The etheric template body is the throat chakra. The celestial body is the third eye chakra. chakra. And the top one, the catharic body is the crown, crown chakra. chakra. Sorry, I didn't want to put you on the spot there, but, but you, you are did. the chakra master. So. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> Bella is going to go into more chakra and So now, now, what are the chakras? To understand what the chakras are, we need to take a look at the subtle bot, what the subtle body is. Colleen went over the subtle body, but um, it could be defined in two ways. It's the non-physical part of the human being and the energy that flows in and around the human body. Essentially, it's your aura. So we just went over all the auras with Colleen. The chakras can be seen as the energy organs of the subtle body. Some say that there are 114 different chakras, but there are seven main that run along the spine. Most people are familiar with the seven chakras, but there are some that say um, in that there's 12 or more. There's a few above and one below, but we're going to be concentrating on the seven main chakras. And the seven chakras can be looked at as key points of energy in your body that can influence your mental and emotional state. The chakras have been used in the world of meditation and Ayurvedic medicine for generations. The concept has been around since at least 500 BC. And as they appear in the Vedas, an ancient Hindu text from India. Throughout history, many cultures, Egyptians, Hindus, Chinese, Sufis, Sufis, <laughs> Greeks, Native Americans, Incas, and the Maya, among many others, have known these energy centers or the chakra system. They believe them to be reflections of natural law that exists within the universe and inter intertwined counterpart of our physical selves. Each chakra consists of not only the key organs and nerves in your body, but also states of being. Your chakras have been, have long been seen as the most important centers of energy and power in the human body. When the chakras are fully functional, the body stays healthy, balanced, and at peace. So now here you can see the uh, seven chakras, their symbols, and the connection to where they are located in the body. So the chakra is the Sanskrit word for, or translated as disc or wheel. And these, these, this wheel spins energy and that energy is called prana. And this spinning energy corresponds to certain nerve bundles and major organs. And that's how the chakras are connected to your major organs. So when you're when things are out of balance and out of whack, let's so to say, it's connected to a, the specific chakra, which is connected to the specific aura and the energy of your body. When the chakras are open and the body, the body will experience energy and well-being. Each chakra relates to different levels of consciousness, developmental stages of life, emotions, thoughts, colors, sounds, body functions, and so much more. In order to bring harmony to our entire system, subtle energy healing and vibrational medicine tries to assist the individual in bringing the chakras into balance when they're blocked or overactive. There are many outside forces that can hurt our bodies and keep the chakras from being open or clog them and block them. The chakras must be open and flowing if the mind and the body oh, are, <laughs> she just went to, to <laughs> if the mind and the body are to be healthy. The chakras that are critical to energy and well being that you feel throughout your daily life. You don't even realize how much your chakras are affected and what's going on in your life and how they're directly influenced to the areas of your mind and body. The chakras are the energetic gateways between our bodies and the outside environment, which is mother earth, the universal, universal force coming from above down and the earth force coming from below to above. They are the foundational energy centers of the body and that can help heal 
and harmonize your mind, body, and spirit. So there, are, before we really get into some of the chakra or all of the seven chakras that we're going to go over, we need to handle some and dispel some of the myths that, that evolve or that rotate around the chakras. There's basically like three different myths. And myth one is, go ahead, Kyle. Chakra healing is an outside job. So whether or not you receive outside healing assistance from a practitioner in your chakra you know, journey, in the end, you are the one who is the healer of you, not someone else. And in chiropractic, we say you are the doctor of you. Uh, it's the same kind of concept. Healing is always an inside job. While a healing practitioner can guide you on your journey, we each are responsible for our own health. So that's very true. And the second myth is that uh, chakras are affiliated with some specific religion. So people stay away from it because they don't believe in it. Although the original sources of the chakra systems came from religious texts, chakras Chakra healing has since expanded and reached a broader understanding and practice. So many more people are doing chakra balancing and embracing what the chakras are. And so many people of different walks of life are, are working with their chakras. Cultivating chakra health has become an important part of many searching for alternative ways, alternative, an alternative way, sorry, on their healthy spiritual path. And it's not associated with any kind of religion. And some kind of think chakra healing is a form of demonic or dark ritual. Um, you, true chakra like healing, voodoo. Yeah, voodoo. Uh, true chakra healing when it's done is quite opposite of demonic. And I think you might already kind of get that, you know, from what we've just discussed with the auras. Um, you are infusing light, awareness, consciousness, posit positive things into your body, mind, spirit, and your heart, all of which actually dispels darkness. So it's about balance and peace, not about anything dark. Okay, each chakra has its own color, its location, it um, has a symbol, and a life lesson, and also an aura connection. So we went through and just and put together a little thing for you, you to see. So <laughs> the chakra one is the root chakra. Its color is red. Its location is at the base of the spine, right by the coccyx. It's called the root chakra because it's, it's the stabilizing point for all the seven main chakras. And it's the closest to the spine and it's closest to the earth. The symbol is a, a lotus flower with four petals and the center square has an inverted triangle. And they're saying that what they say is that um, it has four because the number four symbolizes either the four seasons, the four cardinal directions or the four elements. And um, the inverted triangle points down towards the earth. The life lesson here is to feel safe and secure in the physical plane to manifest our basic needs and cultivate healthy physical sexuality. The second chakra is orange, it's sacral. It is in the lower belly, just a few two to three inches below your belly button. Um, and it encompasses your ovaries and your prostate. And it really has to do with um, relationships, creativity, your sexuality, success and money, and your ability to feel compassion and emotions, to be intimate with others. When this is out of whack, then that's where you're going to see some problems with intimacy and sexuality because it has to do with where it is in your body and your ovaries and the organs that it's related to. This has the six petals of the lotus, and that symbolizes what we need to over overcome. Anger, hatred, jealousy, cruelty, desire, and pride. And the number six is connected to the cycles. It's, um, it is hidden in the 360 degree cycle, 60 minutes of an hour or the 12th month of a year. The two concentric, concentric circles are forming the moon. And the life lesson here is to use emotions to connect with others without losing our identity and to freely express creativity and a healthy emotional sexuality. 
The third chakra is the solar plexus. That color is yellow. Can't really see it too much, but it's, it says yellow. It's in the stomach area, in the belly button area. It connects us with the energy to take action and is a seat of self-esteem, expressing our personal power, our relationship to the world and a world around us, our knowledge of beliefs and about the place within it. It has um, 10 petals, which carry a dual meaning. There is just so much information on each chakra and each what each color means, which we, we could do a two hour presentation just on chakras only. So we're just trying to narrow it down as best as we can. So the downward pointing triangle is related to energy, attracting energy like a magnet from the cosmos, radiating energy, will and power out to the world and makes it usable to the human body. The life lesson here is to use emotions to connect with others without losing our identity, to freely express creativity and healthy emotional sexuality, to experience the depth of, depth of who we are with self-empowerment, self-esteem, and to live our life's task or soul's life's purpose. Basically, when, when the chakras are open and functioning and your energy is working, all these life lessons and the meanings, everything is flowing right for you. The fourth chakra is the center chakra, which connected to the center aura. It's at the center of your chest, slightly to the left of your physical heart. We see the possibilities of internal and external worlds here, the world of spirit and form. The, the heart chakra is the center chakra of, of everything. There are three chakras above it and three chakras below it. <clears throat> it holds the sacred sparkle of the divine and the influence of mother earth. What, they're, what they say is that everything above the heart chakra is related to your emotions and everything below the heart chakra is related to your physical being. The 12 petal lo lotus also has dual meaning and the hexagram is made from two intersecting triangles pointing up and down and the heart seeks balance between these two flows of integration of spirit and matter and the life lesson for the heart chakra of course of love is to experience compassion connection with oneself and others the throat chakra the throat chakra is blue sapphire or turquoise it sits at the base of the throat at the carotid plexus and trachea the throat and the neck area the meaning of the shock this chakra is all about choice willpower, and the right to speak and be heard. Speaking our peace is our God-given right of choice. And having said this, not all we say brings us peace. Some of what we say disempowers us, yet some empowers. What we say is caused by unloving or loving imprints of our past, being accepting of it. And with the throat chakra, it's about expression. It's, it's, speaking, it's Community. communication that was, <laughs> that was coming out. Um, it's a 16 petal lotus flower. In its center, we find a downward pointing triangle and this time with a drawn triangle between its sides. The inner circle represents the moon and that's often to be a symbol of a purified mind. And the life lesson is to speak and receive the truth. The third eye is the sixth chakra. The color is purple and indigo. And it is in your, it's your, between your eyebrows in your brow area, in your forehead, right above, uh, right above your eyes, where your brain. Um, our intuition and our ability to see with vision come from this chakra. The center of the divine wisdom and the spiritual eye that seeks to see and know the truth of all things. Our intuition is guided by this chakra. It has the two purple lotus, which believe to be the remaining duality of self and God. Some feel it also to represent the two sides of your brain, the two parts of your pituitary gland, and the downward triangle, and inside is the holy symbol, Om. 
the source of all creation. And the life lesson is to use your insight and intuition to see the past and phys the physical. And the last, the seventh chakra is the crown chakra. This is white, but I, I couldn't put white. Uh, so, <laughs> and sometimes it's purplish white or it's a violet white. It is at the top of the head, um, the top and the tip of the cranium where your hair is. And, and it's all about your brain. And um, this chakra is located and spins very, this chakra is located and spins very quickly as a thousand petal lotus. It's our direct connection to God and the universe's guidance that comes directly into us. The divine transmitted and received from this chakra. It is the highest chakra of the seven, of the seven main chakras. Um, the symbol, as you could say, there's a thousand petal white lotus flower. It's, it is a pure representation, the full blossoming of consciousness. And this is to experience the divine meaning of life. So let's, let's recap a bit here. So in a quick way, chakras are your energy centers. Your aura is kind of like looking in the window at your full health. Curly in photography can show us what your chakras or what your aura really looks like. Um, and then number seven relates to seven layers of your aura and seven chakras. And each layer of your aura does correspond to a chakra. And I think we just kind of, you know, connected all that for you. Um, and you can see the, the similarities between the two. Um, each chakra has its own color and a specific symbol. And your chakras are affected by everything, everything. and everything affects them <laughs> on top of it. So your aura is actually kind of defined back and shaped in your, in your childhood as you grow up. That's where you get all of your life lessons. Um, your auras are supplied energetically from their corresponding chakras and your aura can change as the energy from your chakras change, which is moment to moment actually. Um, and there are huge defining moments in our lives that can reshape our auras more than others like um, traumas, even positive ones like a, a birth of a child. When you look into your baby's eyes, you know, you, it, it's life defining, it's changing. A healthy aura is bigger, wider, and it has more vibrant and well-structured layers. An unhealthy aura is smaller, it's tighter against the body with those muddied and muted colors with thinner layers. Chakras are negatively affected, affected by, by emotion, emotion, stress, lack of sleep, sickness, being scattered, anxiety, trying to control your life too much, and relations with others and ourselves. And chakras are positively affected by more exercise, relieving stress, um, sleep, excitement, spiritual awakenings, and epiphany moments. So what causes blockages and imbalances of the chakras? There are so many different factors that have a role in the unwanted development of the chakra blockages. Once you know, then you can take care and prevent, take preventative action and try to avoid it. And it will help reduce or eliminate some of these blockages. And an imbalanced chakra can come from being overstimulated and understimulated or it could be completely blocked. So here you're seeing some physical and mental emotional types of conditions that could be associated with each of these chakras. Um, and like, just for example, the root chakra can, and we had valid mention, we talked about the connections with your body. So think about the root chakra, how low it is, and all of the possible areas that it can be affecting, low back pain, sciatica, hemorrhoids and constipation, um, lower body, you know, arthritis, knee problems. And, you know, some of the emotional and mental things are um, the ability to stand up for yourself. So think about lower body, your legs, the strength of that, um, and possibly fear of letting go. So we're going to take a look at some of those and see where you might relate back into them. Um, stuff maybe you're experiencing. That you could clear up with some of the clearing, balancing of the chakras. So we're just taking a quick overview of some of the, like the knee pain and the chronic low back pain. So in the throat chakra, um, you can get a raspy sore throat, 
um, mouth ulcers, TMJ, it's sinus related. So if you think about where your throat chakra is or even the third eye chakra, and you can connect back to what's happening physically in your body. Um, you can get a stiff neck, scoliosis, swollen glands. And then the um, emotional aspect of it is communication issues like we discussed before. So I also found a book because I, I have my, um, my, Oh my gosh, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> I'm a frustrated bartender, not my bartending <laughs> stuff. So I had to find a book on tonics for, at first I really thought it was alcoholic, but I had to find a book on tonics to, and this is also helps clear the aura, your, your chakras and clear your mind and body and your spirit. And we're, I found a recipe, well, actually John found a recipe to clear the throat chakra. So I made this drink tonight. So Colleen's going to explain the, um, the blue listening shake. So think about this. The next time you're engaging in a conversation, notice how many times you feel you need to get your point across. And this happens to me a lot where I want to, <laughs> Val calls me an interrupter. She calls John an interrupter, um, <laughs> where you really just feel like you got to say something. And often our own ideas and our ego get in the way of our listening. We are so busy trying to say something that we often don't actually listen. So try to allow an idea to arise that you want to communicate and see if you can let it go and actually not talk about it. A friend wants to talk to you about her idea for a short story and you want to tell her about the plot of a similar story you read in a literature course. Um, instead, keep quiet and notice the conversation will continue without your every input and that you and your ability to listen is enhanced as you dis distance yourself from thoughts that are stimulated in daily dialogues. If you can't listen well, your throat chakra may be blocked. Try avoiding pungent flavored drinks and foods and caffeine to assist in balancing um, the throat chakra. So we found a um, blueberry listening shake for your throat chakra and it's an excellent it's excellent for the thyroid and metabolic processes and it has coconut water which heals the thyroid and the parathyroid glands which are located which right are located in the area of the throat chakra throat chakra so blueberries are considered a superfood and because of their high level of antioxidant antioxidant photonutrients blueberries help us cultivate the light vibratory frequencies of ether and symbolize the chakra for, of the color blue. And kids will love this drink because it will help them develop the ability to hear what adults are trying to say to them. So you can look over the, um, look over the recipe and um, we, I made it tonight for, for the two of us. So we're drinking it as we're explaining and listening using our voices through our throats. <laughs> Throat chakras. So why do we need to heal the uh, heal and balance the chakras? So we need to, the state of our chakra is impacted by life experiences. It's, it's as if our experiences imprint the energetic patterns into the chakras and influence the way they work. Negative experiences have particularly strong impact as they often result in raising defenses, translating in, su in suppression or concentration and the energy flow of the chakras. So what are some of the ways to achieve harmony and balance of the chakras and bring them to homeostasis? We can use um, chakra and cleansing rebalancing, meditation and dietary habits, acupuncture, grounding yourself, yoga, reflexology, Reiki, Qigong. All amazing things. Amazing things. Um, we want you to understand that those things are all amazing um, and can do a lot for you. Um, and life is all energy. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Our auras and our chakras are actually our personal electromagnetic magnetic field, our bioenergetic field. And our daily lives, which, whether it's the physical part, like sitting too much, 
and emotional experiencing uh, experiences like being in stressful conversations all create little electromagnetic changes in our bodies that affect the energy of the chakras and then are reflected in your aura. These activities and practices that we just talked about um, are wonderful ways to balance your chakras and strengthen your aura, but there are more advanced ways to tap into and support your chakras and it's kind of Star trek you like. So a vibration device called the Healy offers you the ability to scan the health of your aura, your bioenergetic field, and it then gives supporting frequencies to balance your chakras. So we use this device in the office with patients, on ourselves, our friends, our family members. Its ability is amazing to assess your energy in the moment. It's very accurate. Mm -hmm. um, then it creates the perfect frequencies that are vibrated to your bioenergetic field, and they help to create balance and homeostasis, which is Val's favorite word, homeostasis, mm -hmm. and strengthen your aura. So we're gonna show you some examples of what the scans look like. And I hope you can kind of see these, but we're, we're gonna read them to you a little. Um, so on the first one on the left gives you uh, a little overview of all seven of your chakras and what level they're at. And we want them to be as close to hundred as possible. You can see some of them there are 64, 70, the lower ones. Um, and then I showed you in the second one there the actual scanning happening and it's cycling through all the different chakras and then over into the the third one um and the, the fourth and the fifth one i'm going to show you or explain a little bit of these are the results that you get so this one's pulling up a heart chakra um it does say the color should be green but the present state is actually red so that's where your body is off balance and there's a little description as to what's going on there. The person had experienced strong injuries in relation to love, or this person is not able to love themselves. They don't put attention on, they don't pay attention to the uh, wishes of their heart or the person feels in incapable, incapable of, of love. Of love. Um, another one is the crown chakra, and that should be a violet color, which we talked about earlier. Um, and it's right now it's a green. Um, and that says the direction of our of their lives are being decided by others. And the last one is the root chakra is showing up and it should be red, red, but it's more blue. And this is saying that big changes are about to happen. The old doesn't apply anymore and the new is not yet visible. So this is real time tangible information that then can be sent through this device to your body, to your bioenergetic field, to your chakras, and to um, your aura to balance and strengthen everything. And this device actually has specific programs to frequencies, frequencies that process um, the, you know, the vibrations to your direct uh, auras, or I'm sorry, chakras. Um, there's programs for each individual chakra. So it's really a cool device. We've been using it in the office and um, really experiencing some, some really great cool results. things with a lot great of results. people and for ourselves and our family. So if anybody wants more information about that, you can always let us know and we can explain more. So okay, I want to read this. Part. Val has something else she wants to read. <laughs> we, we want, we talked about, um, we talked about the chakras and, and the blocks and there's something else that we can do. Um, just the positive habits and how they influence, influence your life and influence the chakras. And, and the best thing that you can do in order to keep the chakras flowing and functional is to make a few important changes in your life. These changes that you can make are essential as they relate heavily to allow your body to and your body and mind to stay focused and healthy. Naturally, some think that medications can do this, but um, when you're recover, when you're to recover the signs and symptoms of the block chakra, and that's not a great idea. But in some cases, you will end up suffering from the same problem later on, or it'll be worse, forcing you to make to to take more meds and to resolve the issue. So we're trying to, we try to do things as naturally as possible. So when chakras are off balance, the best thing that you can do is those different things to open up 
the chakras for yourself because you may have gotten rid of a headache early in the day, but when it comes back, it comes back with vengeance to interrupt your day to take more meds. So doing some of these things that we've showed you, like even the Healy, um, the meditation, all the things that we've showed you, doing these things will open and balance your chakras and it will surprise you. You will have less of a need or even maybe no need to be dependent on such things if you get at get your chakras to function properly. And as you engage in the series of these healthy habits that we've showed you, um, it will be easier for the chakras to be res to be restored and controlled. All so eat better. Better health. Better health. Eat better, <laughs> exercise, have your chakras done. <laughs> so we want to say thank you everyone for attending, for listening, for being a part of this with us. Um, sorry about those little technical issues that we had with the slides um, and the video and the video playing. So we want to show you our drink. Right. And this is, we just want to say, here's some um, information. If you want to take a quick picture of this, this is how you can contact us. Um, Facebook, Instagram, there's our uh, email address and actually a phone number to the office where we're at. So I am going to, I'm going to stop the share. Oh, hope. Someone's trying to come in now. So I'm going to stop the share. All right. And everyone. here's our drink. Here we are. It's blue. It's, it's got blueberries. blueberries. Tonic. Thank you, John. I'm going to unmute all of you. All right. You guys can unmute yourself if you'd like. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Anybody can kind of chime in here if you have any questions. Anyone, anyone? <laughs> Stacy, we thought of you. I know she just got up. Oh, we thought of you. You have to make this. I need that recipe. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'll give you the recipe tomorrow when you come to the office. This is Joey. Oh, Joey. Oh, Joey. All right, Joey, I'll email you the recipe. You can unmute yourself if you have questions. It is delicious. It's got coconut, blueberries, <laughs> flaxseed oil. Jeez. Oh, oh there. I'm sitting here yelling. Oh my God. <laughs> so we hoped you like our little thing. There is so much, so much information on chakras and auras and to bring it all together. We, we could have done two hours. We could have really done two hours just on just on auras and two hours just on chakras. You should, when it warms up, you should in your office and we could have, yes. you know, oh, yeah. and cocktails. No. <laughs> and have the cocktails. I, said, I had to stop myself from putting vodka in it. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't defeat the purpose of um, making a, a nice, healthy tonic. For, for yes. <laughs> And Hope, we Funny. saw that you just came in, but we did start an hour ago. So, <laughs> but it's all, it's gonna, it's recorded. So, you know, if you wanna look at anything in it, you know, and watch it again, you are absolutely welcome to, we'll send the link out. Um, so does anybody else have any questions with their stuff in the chat? Let's see here. No, but I think I realized every single one of my chakras is blocked. <laughs> no. no. You know what? I, I actually, when we have the, I have the healing on and I've, since I've been focusing on learning about it, because we really didn't know that much about it, I yeah. actually run all seven chakras on myself. Yeah. Just to just to try and get myself more open. Yeah. I, I do. I run all seven chakras. It, it's it's the easiest thing to do, and to um, actually clear them out, do some meditation, do some deep breathing. Yeah. You know, yeah. is is Nusha still on? Go for acupuncture. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So Nusha, Colleen, Nusha, we we Colleen figured out about the um the acupuncture pressure points. Well, so oh yeah. Tell I me mean, if this is true. So when sure. I was reading that they say in the acupuncture meridians that those are all little actual chakras where you guys put the needles. And the twisting is okay. you twist the needle a little bit, and that is what helps increase Unblock the, it. the energy. So the
the twisting actually so actually we have like the it's called the ren channel that does run right in the middle of the body and okay. uh, and um so that's that is exactly where the chakras are located as well um and when we do needling and we when we're kind of like twisting it slightly is stimulating in different styles what we'll i will be can stimulate it in different ways sometimes just with needle insertion you can feel sensations um and yeah, it's definitely like it's it's almost like embedded into the acupuncture points. A lot of the basic points that we use there but are you related. Open up the chakras. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, in our mind, we're opening up like the particular point, and a lot of those points are related to they're connected to a lot of different channels, right? Like a lot of the meridians kind of converge right in the middle, right? Uh, right so right. it's yeah, also so it's very do- yin. <laughs> What's that? No, I said when we do our next one on meridians and other stuff, we're we're calling you. <laughs> yes, I would love to collaborate. This was so so helpful. Um, as we're phenomenal, I love it, love it, I love it. All right, does anyone else have any other questions? I do. This is Rena Esposito. Hello, Rena Esposito. Hello. Thank you for having this. I joined a little late, but um. I've been listening for the last, I don't know, 45 minutes, and it's been entertaining. But you were talking about using the Healy for balancing your chakras and your auras. And how have the two of you personally um, felt shifts um, using that to help balance out your body? Um, The first time I ran all seven chakra, it it took a while. You know, you're not really supposed to do seven programs. But I ran and I felt, I felt lighter. I felt like um, I I was kind of floating and I had more energy. So I, that's the one thing that I noticed that I had more energy. I didn't have, I was getting headaches and I was doing all that and, and just feeling better overall. It was an overall balance for me. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And I think I'm been you know, focusing on the chakra programs with the Healy and using them in the moment for what I want to work on or open. Like, so before we did this, I actually ran the throat, throat chakra, chakra because we are expressing and, you know, giving information. And I did the third eye chakra because it is um, helping focus my brain and, you know, and bring out the energy with that. So there's lots of uses for these things and you can, focus on the using the, you know, something like the Healy or um, there are loads of people that have great practices that they go along with. Like our friend, Joey, um, she does Qigong. Um, people use their, uh, you know, regular acupuncture to keep making sure that their energy is, is moving and flowing. Um, and just there simple are things actual, like there meditation are, and yoga. Right. You know, and there are or, actual um, chakra balancers out there and yeah. chakra healers out there that do that stuff. So yeah, that's lots of cool things. So thanks for that question, Rena. Anyone sure. else? Rena, I have a question for you. <laughs> okay, then. Since you do reflexology, yes. and it's all connected, yes. you know, does re- reflexology help you open your chakras? Well, it does, sure, because all of these practices are all layered. You know, it's all running, even, you know, um, when body workers work, that's on the fascia release, like it's all related and it runs down your acupuncture points, your meridians, your chakras, auras, like, yeah, it's all layered um, and it's all very systemic and it works very synergistically. So all of these different modalities are amazing. And I think we just need to be open to trying them whenever our body needs a shift, you know, our body shifts every single day. But you know, if you've been trying reflexology for a long time, you're like, yeah, I'm not really feeling the benefits of it anymore or as much of a shift as maybe you once were, you were doing chiropractic for a long time and you're like, I'm not really feeling a big shift anymore like I felt before when I first started well because your body shifts every day and maybe it's time to try something else because the body's looking for that next step that next thing to incorporate into its natural healing abilities and so what is that other thing that we can add or take away or modify um you know and it's all these are all ancient practices that we just keep refining and retuning so it's all related 
it's all connected. Yeah. It's just what resonates with people at what day and what time and what stage of their life they're in. And, you know, what are people introduced to at the time? You know, some people have no idea what reflexology is and some people have no idea what Qigong is, right? So like we can help educate um, our community, like how this can be so beneficial to the body. And, um, you know, just because it's been around a long time, it doesn't mean that they know about it. People only know with what they know. Right. That was amazing. This is why we love you, Rena. <laughs> that was great. That was, <laughs> that was very, for, for you to be put on the spot, that was awesome. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments? We Joey, I will send you the stuff. I'll text it to you. Yeah. Thank you. I will make it for you. Right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. We will be doing another Evolve class um, next month. And we are not 100% sure which one it's going to be, but we will let you know. We have a few that we are thinking about doing and uh, just, you know, keep an eye out for it. And thank you all for coming. Yes, thanks we, so much. We love having everybody on and sharing all this information with you. That's, that's our goal is just to share information. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. It's really informative. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. 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 Th